We're live. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alex Halsey. I'm the health fitness specialist at the McPlain location. Happy Thursday, Friday Eve to you. Welcome to PPL, push, pull, legs, where every workout gives you one less reason to get a BBL. All right, so if you don't know what that means, don't even sweat it. You can consult Google later, but just know we're here to get you moving, give you a good workout so you can get on with the rest of your day and keep getting stronger and stronger. All right, so check the description. You'll see what moves we have coming up for you today. We're going to have a three sequence format, just like we always do. We're going to hit every sequence and spend six and a half minutes on that sequence and then we'll move on to the next all right so we focus on one move at a time so today uh we're going to have three different sequences just like usual for every move you're going to be able to add in additional movements to make that move a little bit more effective it's optional but definitely not required so you will need weights for today's class we're going to be using the weights for every sequence all three sequences will have weights in them so grab your weights you'll need something light and of course the more options you have the better but i would suggest you start off with something light uh have something moderate ready just in case you want to kick it up and then of course something heavy if you're really just trying to get it today all right so we're gonna go ahead and get warmed up make sure you have your weight options available for you in case you need to grab them and let's get started <clears throat> All right, so we're just going to begin doing some step back burpees to get the heart rate up. So no burpees with the jumps, especially if you have somebody below you, home friendly. I'm on the second floor of my home and I got wood flooring, so this can be heard throughout the house if I get a little rowdy. And if you're in an apartment or anything like that, I definitely can understand the importance of staying relatively quiet. So, but if you want to, you can always add in the push up here. You can always add in the jump. So we're going to double time it, pick it up, pick up the pace. You can add in the push up. You can add in the jump if you want here. The goal here is just to warm up the body, get the heart rate elevated a little bit. course being smooth with your movement one more and from here we're gonna go right into down dog you're gonna reverse it into a hip sag bring the head back and we're just gonna alternate back and forth here a few times Exhale as you push back in the down dog. You're pushing your head as close as you can to your feet. You should feel this in the low back, the upper back, and in the hamstrings and the calves at the top of your stretch. Last one. From here, returning to the high plank, push your butt to your heels, almost like you're doing a squat, just facing the floor. Smooth with your movements. Should be getting those cracks out. Last one. All right, from here, drop to your knees and hands. We're going to go right into some cat cow. Squeeze the glutes and the abs. When you come under, and of course, bring the crown of your head all the way back. Still being fluid with those movements. From here, you're going to push your shoulder to your right hip and then your left shoulder to your left hip. You're keeping your hips square, you're bending at the spine like an accordion. One more east side. All right, and from here, you're gonna come 
right on that two lift squat. So we're just gonna do some body weight squats. You're not going all the way down at the bottom of your squat. You should be holding your weight with your muscles, not your joints. So I'm not hanging out at the bottom with no tension in the muscles. I'm coming down just before that point and then right back up. Try to bring your butt back to your heels. Again, we're not going all the way down. So we're gonna take three reps. Pause at the bottom. You're gonna dig your elbow into your left knee, just like so. And you're gonna rotate up. And then of course, switch sides. Again here, you're not at the very bottom, just sitting on your joints. And there's three, come up. The legs should kind of be turning on. Hopefully you got that burn. Last move. Gonna come back to the mat, butt on the ground. Gonna do some tables. So just roll your shoulders back and down. Bridge up, back down. Bridge up, back down. Opening up the shoulders and the chest here. Then we're gonna go into a rock. So bring the butt to the heels and back. Keep the shoulders pulled down and back. Don't let the shoulder base get pushed into the ears. All right, so go ahead, come on up to your feet. We're ready to get going. So again, we're gonna have four, or I'm sorry, three um, sequences. Each sequence, we're gonna have one moves that we can uh, add in with a optional move to make that move a little bit more effective, a little more challenging. All right, so we got six and a half minutes. Bam, rest is 30 seconds. So we're gonna take our uh, six and a half minute interval. We're gonna take 30 seconds of rest in between the transition and then we'll keep it moving. So for our first interval, we're gonna work on uh, let me see what move we have here. All right, so we have a overhead raise with an optional row. So you're gonna grab a relatively light weight here. This is a straight arm move. So we're raising the weight straight overhead from the side. This is what it looks like. Straight arms and you lift the weight straight over your head and then back down. And you can add in a row if you want. So once you complete your movement, you fold over, row, pull right into your belly button and back down and then you repeat. So this is the pull in our push pull legs. This is the pull, all right? So relatively lightweight, we've got six minutes. Keep your heavier weight around just in case you wanna increase the weight. And again, that row is optional. The main focus is the overhead raise. So you're keeping your arms straight the whole time. All right, so here we go. Starting that timer, counting down from five, four, three, two, one. All right. So relatively lightweight, relatively lightweight. You should be feeling this in the shoulders, but definitely across the mid and upper back. As you lift and bring the weight back down, you wanna make sure you're controlling the weight on its way back down. So before you move, you wanna take up the slack in your joints. The way you can do that is just create tension in your shoulders. Pull, in other words, pull the shoulders, set the shoulders. So you're gonna kind of get them to a neutral position. You're gonna pull them back slightly. Neutral position as in not roll forward, not pull completely back, but right in the middle, not elevate into your ears, not pull completely down, but right in the middle. 
set your shoulder in that position, create some tension, and then ex execute your movement. And then, of course, add in your row. You're doing your best to keep your arms straight through the movement. And because we do not have leverage, you want to make sure your weight is light. And what I mean by we don't have leverage is we're lifting the weight while keeping the arm straight. That removes leverage. Anytime you bend your limb, you always gain more strength, more stability, i.e. leverage. And we're repping this out the entire time. If you need to take a break, you can take a break. But otherwise, you want to keep going until you kind of need to take that break. Once you kind of can tell you're getting tired and your form is starting to be affected because you're fatigued, that's when you want to take a break. Take a break before it gets to that point, but just before it gets to that point. So we're able to build strength here because we're repeating the move over and over again. That's gonna help us better our form, better our mind-muscle connection. This is given you're working with an appropriate weight. So we are almost at the three minute mark, keep going. And when you come overhead, you want to make sure the pits of your elbows come towards your ears. As opposed to facing each other. You want the pits of the elbows to be out and then set the shoulders, lift. And you kind of want the pits of your elbows getting towards your ears. Still control that weight on the way down. <sighs> Two and a half minutes to go. Keep it up, guys. Keep that form nice and clean. Make sure you pull to your belly button in the row. If you're doing the row, take your breaks as you need. Go through that setup, brace the shoulders, brace the core, and then execute your movement. Control the weight coming down, less than two minutes. You wanna maintain that tension in your shoulder that you develop before you start moving throughout the entire range of motion so that you can maintain control and stability throughout the entirety of the move. So don't feel bad if you feel like you need to reset and reorganize every rep. At least you know you're gonna be doing it more right than you would be less right. So we're really hitting the upper body here right now. The second move, we're gonna be hitting the lower body. You can have an optional move in there to hit the upper body again. We got less than a minute remaining. Again, you'll feel this in the upper back, in the mid back. And if you add in a row, you'll really feel it in your lats which is that middle, that mid to lower portion of the back. We've got less than 30 seconds remaining.
Let's keep it up, guys. Workout doesn't start until you begin to get a little tired. So once you can tell that, keep going. If you need to take a break, take a break. 10 seconds. Listen out for the three last to signify the three seconds left. All right. Woo. That's also why I say get lightweight so you can keep going. So next we have a transverse lunge. If you're in a rectangle or square room, you're going to face that corner or have your left shoulder toward that corner. Step back. Have your right foot face the back corner. And that's going to be your transverse lunge. So you start facing forward and you come down, lunge, and back up. Your modification is going to be a trans, or not a transverse lunge, a Cossack. All right, so left foot toward the left front corner of the room, right foot toward the back right corner of the room. Make sure you get a wide enough stance in order for that lunge to, to be effective. It's almost like a Cossack, but you add in a rotational component. So I'm front, I'm leaning back. You can bring both feet together if you want. You can step back each move, or you can just leave your feet in place and move your body. That's the easier way to do it, but it's just like a Cossack. Here, we wanna hit 10 reps each leg, keep alternating. And you wanna make sure you have no socks on or some good grip uh, down on the floor. I need a little bit of grip here. So I need to remove my socks. So again, left foot, left corner, left front corner of the room. You step that right foot back. You don't have to point your toe in the right corner, but you just need to step your foot back in that area of the right back corner. You lunge, come right back up. Again, you can pick your foot up and place it down after each rep like I am right now, or you can leave your leg back and then just do your lunge right here. All right, I prefer to bring my leg. Just because this forces me to be a little bit more forceful with returning back to the top position. And then when you switch legs, you can switch facing directions or you can switch directions that you're facing to make it a little bit easier. And you can do the same thing. Left foot toward the... Uh, now that you've switched directions, you've faced a different way, same thing. Left foot toward the left front, back foot, back right. And come right back. All right. I actually had that wrong, guys. All you do is slide to the right. Now we're working the left leg. So right foot is to the right front. Back leg come to the left back. There we go. So forgive me, I might have had y'all messed up a little bit. And from here, you move. And of course, again, you can Turn that foot back, keep your feet planted, and you can just lunge just like this. That's okay. And if you want, you can lift your foot, bring it with you, as I am right here. So your alternative, again, is a Cossack. The muscles are working here are the inner thighs. You're getting a stretch on the inner thighs, turning and rotating like this. And that's why your Cossack is an alternative. Both of these moves are gonna work the inner thigh. All right, so when you switch legs, just slide to the other side of the room. 
I'm back on my right leg. So I just slid to the left, left leg is to the left front, right leg is gonna step back toward the back right. And if you are coordinated enough to just do these without my instruction, good for you. Don't let me mess you up. If I'm giving too many words, I do apologize. Ooh, but hopefully you can kind of just see what I'm doing instead. And you can still get your work in. We're going to get a time check here in a second. All right, so we have just over one minute remaining. Keep it going, guys. So if you are lifting and dropping your foot, just know that that is a little bit more intense because you're lifting and dropping the foot. You have to maintain control and you have to be a little bit for more forceful on your way back up compared to just leaving your foot down. And I forgot to mention, you can do an optional curl here. Ooh. So at the top, bring it back, curl. So if you want a little bit more work for the last few seconds we have, add in that curl. And listen out for those three blasts to signify the three seconds left. And then we'll take a break, go into our last sequence, our last interval. Ooh, but I'm sure, oh, here it is. Okay. Good work, good work. Might have taken a little bit of extra time to get the coordination down with that move, get the right setup. But thank y'all for holding on. The last move is a squat press. You'll have your weights. You can squat and press out at the bottom. Press your weight out at the bottom, bring it in, stand up, or you can squat at the bottom, press at the top. 10 reps, take a break, come right back. Okay, so this one you should be able to do regardless if you have socks or shoes on or not. So I'm gonna choose to press down at the bottom. And this is the harder variation of the two Pressing at the bottom, pressing at the top is a little bit more easy, but nonetheless, we're getting the shoulders, getting the full body involved, no matter which move you choose. So you should be able to kind of sit back a little bit if you're pressing at the bottom. You should be able to sit back a little bit because you have that weight in front of you and then you're extending it out, acting as a counterbalance, you should be able to sit back with a little bit more uprightness in your torso compared to normal. Hmm. It's definitely one of them days where it's just harder for no reason. Woo! I mean, I say no reason. It's been a it's been quite the week. But nonetheless, we're here. We're going to keep working. We're going to keep doing what we got to do. We're here, so we might as well just go ahead and get it, get it over, it, right? Whew. So, yes, by the time we get to the end of the week, I'm usually spent, specifically Thursday. All right, back at it. Here we go. Again, you can press up at the top. I'm going to choose to press up at the top right here. I need to take that, I need to take that modification. Whew. 
you're exhaling on your way up and just like with that overhead straight arm overhead press or pull we push the elbows the pits of the elbows into the ears you're doing the same thing here up at the top if you notice the top of the press looks exactly like the top of the pullover we did so the pullover again that was our pull this is our press and of course the legs are involved so this is our legs so we have everything here brought everything together in this move to make it a push pull and legs keep it going guys use the momentum from your squat to get the weight up and just like in the warm-up you're not squatting all the way down to the point where you can just hang out at the bottom sitting on your joints we want to rely on the musculature to keep you up in other words don't squat all the way down squat down low relatively speaking but not so low that there's no tension in your muscles squat to the depth that you can handle and remain uh, active in your muscles to the depth that you know you still have tension in your muscles all right use those muscles to hold yourself at the bottom not gravity and not your skeleton we want to use the muscles all right hope that makes sense hope that makes sense if it didn't allow me to demonstrate hopefully you keep on going but when you come down to the bottom of your squat with no tension in my muscles I can sit here all day but that's as low as I can possibly go your muscles don't have to work the same so hold yourself at the bottom of the squat here if I come here and hold it my muscles have to remain tensed in order to hold that squat that's the depth you want to squat to not all the way down because then you can kind of use momentum and you can use uh, the elasticity stored in your tendons to get yourself back up. So you come down to that depth, press up, not all the way down though. Keep it up guys, come on. Almost there, almost done. Time check. We've got just over 60 seconds remaining. All right, so hopefully you didn't have to do any jumping around today. Be able to keep your steps quiet. And you're still getting a good workout in without, without having to disturb the peace. Whew. So, got enough time for one more here. I'm just going to keep on going. Not even counting the 10. I'm just going to keep on going through the timer. Hopefully you do as well. Let's finish up here. Just a friendly reminder, do not squat all the way down. Squat to the dust. You can tell your muscles have to cut on in order to hold you in that position. Do not squat all the way down. Use the momentum from your legs to transition into that press. And there is our time. So drop your weights, throw those down if there's convenient, conveniently places in mind, you already cleaned up. All right, catch your breath, grab some water, and we're going to stretch out here in a second. type of fatigue today. 
but nonetheless, finish out the workout of PPL. Again, one less reason to get a BBL. So we're gonna stretch out here on the mat, get up out of here. So you're gonna grab, you can catch your breath first. Just sitting down helps you slow the heart rate down. Just come sit down and relax for a little bit, but when you're ready, you're gonna grab your right ankle and pull it back towards your right glute. Stretch out your quad right here. You just wanna take some deep breaths, try to get your heart rate back down to normal. It's a nice relaxing stretch right here. And relax and switch. Grab the left ankle, pull it back toward the left glute. Ooh. Don't forget to track your workouts if that's what you're into. We know that all the devices might not be as accurate in calculating how long we worked out and how far we, we went. The latter being more relevant here. And relax. I'm gonna come to a straddle. So spread the legs open apart. Make sure you push yourself forward. That's going to put your pelvis in a neutral position. So we're going to go for a groin and hamstring stretch here. So you're going to push yourself forward with your arms behind you. Bring your right hand to your left ankle. You're just going to hold on tight here. You should feel the stretch in your left hamstring and in your right groin. And if you are flexible enough, just go ahead and reach toward the toes. Keep using that back arm for support to keep your pelvis in the right alignment and to help you reach down to your ankle or your toe. Take a breath, slowly come up. Same thing, just on the opposite side. Make sure you got that right hand planted behind you. Kind of push yourself forward a little bit. Reach on over to the right ankle. And if you do feel the stretch in your lower back as well, it's completely normal. That's just an additional stretch. You're getting deep in that stretch, so take that stretch with this movement. And relax. I'm gonna bring the left leg out in front of you straight and then cross your right leg up and over the left and hug it into your body. Switch sides. And relax. All right. Gonna come to, um, not down dog, but child's pose. There we go. Reaching up nice and tall. Bring your butt back to your heels. Reach up nice and tall. And 
and we're gonna come on up. We got one more stretch, just come to your feet. We're gonna fold over, stretch out the hamstrings one last time, but also get the back. Bring your feet together, take a breath, fold over. You can grab your ankles or tuck your fingers under your feet. Hopefully you feel this in your back. You can bend your knees if you need to. Just let the upper body go limp. Take a big breath. And exhale. And that's our class for today. So please do keep stretching if you need it. Thank y'all for joining me today. I'll catch y'all on the next class next week for push, pull, and legs. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day and have a good weekend. Holla.